Hey guys, so, uh, it's been so long, I almost forgot how to do this. Um, for various reasons, I've been away from making YouTube videos, uh, mainly because I'm working a full-time job again. Uh, another reason was I was sick with a really bad cold for like a month straight. Uh, and now, I'm still sneezing and congested, and that's probably either just sinuses due to our weather right here, we're having here where I live, or I caught something from somebody at work. Uh, need, need this to be, I've also been away because I've actually been watching a lot of things I want to talk about on YouTube, uh, and reading things I want to talk about YouTube, and I've actually already have written, uh, uh, videos that I plan on shooting, so that's another reason it's gone, I just wanted to have some material ready, uh, I decided to start writing these episodes of <clears throat> more, uh, analytical videos I've decided to write, uh, as for things like Weekly Rundown, where I just talk about books or whatever, I'll, I'm just going to do off the top of my head like I'm doing now. But, yes, that explains my absence. So, uh, I have a bunch of new books I bought and I was going to talk about that I want to read, uh, as well as some things that I already have read, and just kind of give you a general idea of things that, uh, you know, book-wise I'm looking at. Uh, so I just finished this book by John Legan called The Fisherman. I've already written a review for it. Uh, <clears throat> a while back I was doing a thing, a kind of a gimmick where you subscribe to me and the first subscriber gets a video on something they want to talk about. Well, uh, my friend Jeremy Wingard uh, subscribed to my channel and suggested this. So I read this, I loved it, I thought it was absolutely fantastic, and I actually can't wait to do uh, just a standalone video on it. But yeah, that review is already written, I just need to shoot it, so look forward to that one. Uh, I've actually been rereading Pass Through Fire, the collected lyrics of Luke Reed. Um, this is a book I do come back to quite a bit. Uh, and the more I come back to it, the more I understand that, you know, Lou wasn't just a terrific songwriter, he was very insightful, he had a lot of depth. To him, and he was very poetic, um, and that's the best kind of songwriting when you can read its lyrics isolated from the music, and they hold up on their own. And Lou himself said that that's the best kind of lyrics. Uh, okay, here we get to the entirely new books. <laughs> so uh, I just bought this book. Uh, it's called "Quit Your Band." Full title: of "Quit Your Band: Musical Notes from the Japanese Underground" by Ian F. Martin. This examines kind of the <clears throat> music scene in Japan, especially the less popular, uh, culturally accepted stuff there. This talks more about, like, noise artists and, uh, noise rock bands and <clears throat> kind of the underground punk scene there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and it just kind of talk a little bit about, like, the main culture, like, J-pop and idol singers and... Things like that, but uh, I'm a huge fan of Japanese music. I actually listen to it a lot on my own anyway. So I thought it'd be cool if you kind of read like an analysis of it. Uh, also, uh, uh, in nonfiction, I bought Carl Sagan's Cosmos because one, Carl Sagan is a fantastic, brilliant guy, and I wish he was still with us. And two, sadly, I've never read Cosmos, which is weird because I'm a big astronomy nerd. So this is kind of like required reading for someone like me, so I definitely had to kind of get that one and check that out because I feel like I'm doing the memory of Mr. Sagan at the service by not reading it. Now, I have watched the documentary series Cosmos that Sagan did back in the 80s, and that was great, so I'm looking forward to reading the book version. <laughs> um, also, up to bat, since I mentioned poetry, I bought The Complete Poems of Emily Dickinson, uh, Emily's one of my favorites. She's always uh, has been one of my favorite poets. Uh, <clears throat> she's really interesting, very unique, had a very kind of spiritual vibe about her. Uh, she has a way with words and her idiosyncratic way, like her capitalizations and dashes and, you know, kind of express how she viewed the world, which was an entirely unique way. Uh, if you've only heard of her and haven't read anything by her, I highly recommend it. And as you can tell here from this huge book, she wrote quite a bit of, you know, quite a body of work. Uh, which is a shame because very little of it was actually published in her life. Most of this was stuff like her family had found after she died in like her house or her apartment where she lived and decided to publish it after. Uh, 
again, also up in nonfiction, I bought Mystery Train by Grail Marcus. Uh, full title, Mystery Train, Images of America and Rock and Roll Music. This is a classic. Um, it's considered, like, the Bible of, like, rock analysis books. And Grail Marcus is kind of, like, this known scholar in popular music. Um, he's always interested me. I've read a lot about him and about his work, but I've never actually read anything by him. So I wanted to kind of get uh, into his work, and I thought I'd start with his most popular and most renowned book about uh, popular music. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people have said this book has changed their lives. A lot of people said that it's like the finest book ever about pop music, according to the New York Times Book Review. Uh, even Dave Stewart of the Arithmics was like saying, it's an incredible, beautiful book that puts the work of great artists in the context of other arts, particularly literature. And, you know, Springsteen himself has endorsed it. So, I mean, you can't go wrong. But I have heard a lot of people talk about this book being kind of like an eye-opener into, uh, <clears throat> into American culture as seen through its music and how uh, it has reverberated through across cultures and how its influence has spread into other arts and how we've lifted so much uh, from rock music, which in itself lifted from traditional blues uh, traditions, uh, whether, you know, the Mississippi Delta blues and you know, Chicago blues and, and how, you know, that started with like, uh, <clears throat> you know, field hollers and spiritual songs of um, slaves when uh, slavery was a thing. Uh, so I, this book kind of takes like a critical eye of all of that and kind of objectively, uh, objectively kind of says this came from this, came from this, came from this, and this is how it, this has all influenced popular culture around it. <laughs> Sorry. Give me one second. <coughs> all right. Next up. Raymond Carter, Carver, Raymond Carver, A Writer's Life by Carol Skl Sklenica. Uh, I'm a huge Raymond Carver fan. I think anyone who's familiar with this channel in my videos knows I'm a big Raymond Carver fan. I've I've done individual reviews of his work. I did a view encompassing his work and why I like it. I've done a video in imploring people to read his work. Uh, so the next logical step would be to read more about the man himself. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I've read a little bit about his life, and he was a fascinating guy. He was... You know, uh, teacher, he worked several different jobs, he was a janitor for a while, um, <clears throat> he kind of grew up in, like, these little, like, small town communities, and that kind of influenced, like, the small town atmosphere of writing, uh, but he was smart, he was a literary guy, he took classes, he studied under John Gardner, who, if you don't know who that is, he was, like, big shot novelist guy who taught writing classes, uh, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I, I like, I, li I love his writing, and uh, from what I've read about his life and who he was, Ray seemed like a very interesting guy, uh, <clears throat> kind of moved all over, worked various different places, kind of scratched by, uh, it wasn't until later in life that he kind of was like financially secure and kind of more able to just relax and just focus on writing, because a lot of his early writing was done while working full-time jobs and taking care of his wife and he had a kid. And so he only got to write, like, at night, and he was trying to struggle to become a writer, and then uh, when he first started publishing books of short stories, that's when he became famous and became popular, and then towards the latter end of his life, when he was uh, dating or married to the, a poet named Tess Gallagher, that he was able to kind of just focus on writing entirely and just kind of calm down, and I have to worry and stress about money, and things, which is really cool. Um... <clears throat> he was also like an alcoholic for several years and got sober and he kind of looked at his own life as like, you know, <clears throat> alcoholic Ray and then sober Ray. So like so, such a huge division in his life. Uh, speaking of astronomy, astronomy for dummies, because I want to do a refresher course on stuff I may have forgotten about. 